Hi everybody, my name is Tim Gresh. I'm a professional bike fitter in Pennsylvania, and this video will be on a very interesting topic, hip dropping. Um, this is a topic that was introduced to me by Steve Hogg, who is a, a really popular, um, wor like world-renowned um, bike fitter. He's in Australia. Um, I became friends with him. Um, when I was in high school, about 2003, he helped me through a bunch of injuries and really inspired me to become a bike fitter. Um, I love his approach and it really serves as a, kind of the basis of how I go about things. And um, he um, showed the hip drop to me um, as something that is fairly common and uh, can create a lot of issues for cyclists. Um, bike fitting is uh, a lot about problem solving and spotting corresponding things. So if there's pain uh, or if a, if a cyclist is having pain in one area of their body while they're cycling, oftentimes it's not related to that specific area. It's happening from something else. It's a fallout of compensation from the body not moving right in another area. And the hip drop is a great example. Um, I'm going to show you a video from about 10 years ago of a client of mine who had a significant hip drop on their right side. Um, we're going to show you a before and after so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here we are. This is the right hip drop. You do not need to be a professional bike fitter to see this. On every right side downstroke, and we're under high load here. He's doing a VO2 max, a lot of watts. He's just dropping that hip straight down on every right side downstroke. Um, we're going to show the after the bike fit adjustments uh, and how this looks. Um, he's just about to shift into a harder gear. This is the after, and he's ramping it up to about his VO2 max effort again. And uh, as you can see, that right hip drop is, is basically gone. Um, still there a little bit. Um, we're not looking for 100% perfection. Um, the goal isn't to get rid of a uh, things completely. That's not realistic. We are not perfectly symmetrical. Uh, we just want as much of a reduction as we can. Um, and we can see here in the side to side, uh, just, you know, it's pretty dramatic. That right hip drop is just glaringly obvious in the before. So great example, classic example of a hip drop. So there you have it. There's the right hip drop, a before and after. Quick note, um, Steve Hogg told me, or, or has, and he's also written about this a lot in his blog, that um, hip drops are more common on the right side. And in my over 10 years of experience professional bike fitting, I, I find that to be true. Um, most times it is a right hip drop. Every now and then I'll see an individual who's dropping the left hip. Um, but in the case of that video that I showed you, that rider was um, coming into the fit complaining of right hand discomfort. Uh, specifically, the right hand would go numb. And the reason that was happening is because on every right side downstroke, as they were dropping that right hip, they had to brace that force with the right hand, and that's why their hand was having that discomfort. So by calming down that hip drop, we were able to virtually eliminate the right hand discomfort. And a similar thing happens with other body parts. Commonly, there will be knee pain um, for a rider who has a hip drop. So if we're using that right hip drop as an example, dropping that right hip will actually kind of challenge the plane of motion of the left leg and cause left leg issues, left knee issues, usually on the lateral part of the knee or medial part kind of up the adductor. And the reason for that is if you think about it, um, pretend like you're holding a uh, barbell, you're doing a squat, um, go into the squat position, drop down, but just lean over to the right side and keep going down. And what you'll notice is that the left leg kind of just gets a little wobbly. It's not tracking that well. The same thing happens on the bike. You drop that right hip, the left leg just kind of goes all over the place. So the right hip drop is causing the left side issues. So if we can fix the right hip drop, we can fix the left side issues. Um, similar thing happens with saddle sores. Saddle sores that are happening on one side and not the other can oftentimes be because of a hip drop. Um, the cool thing about the video that I showed you is that in the after, you could see that improvement, and we were able to achieve that 
not by doing anything too crazy, not by putting in leg length shims or uh, anything like that. Um, that was really by getting his center of balance better because coming into the fit, he could not pass the balance test. I did make a video on balance and stability. That's worth checking out. So we got his center of balance right. We also set his seat height in a good sensible spot. So he was able to get through the bottom of the pedal stroke with good control under high load. Um, and that was what did the trick for him. It stabilized his pelvis and it gained symmetry back. Um, hip dropping is really interesting because um, it was a moment for me in my bike fitting career that kind of just showed that in cycling, um, we have a perfectly symmetrical machine, and then on top of it, we have a human body, and the human body is not symmetrical in the way that it moves. We all have um, differences in the way that we move. We move in an asymmetrical way to varying degrees. And the hip drop is a great example of showing that that's, that's what happens when we're on the bike, specifically if we have a bike position that's not very functional. Um, and uh, if your seat height's too high, if your center balance is off, if your cleats aren't in the right position, or any combination of those things or other things, um, it can trigger these weird asymmetries that cause pain. So one of the goals in a good bike fit is to try and reduce those asymmetries, get stability, get balance, so that you're feeling better on the bike. Um, really interesting topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Leave comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.